one, and that is time! Hi, this is Socket from London 101 b Mark Cloud's getting there. I'm the team captain and builder. Hi, I'm Timor. I'm also a builder. When this is our world's robot right here on our second version of our snailbot, which we originally first built for states. This is pretty much the exact same robot, just a little lighter um, and improved in various different areas, which we'll talk about right now. Yeah, so our drive base is very standard. We're on 360 RPM on the wheels, 3.25 inch. Six motors, they're all built in one line. It allows us to just build it more simply. Yeah, it also helps with the hot swap because there is a little bit of space in between. The drive base is all interconnected, um, you know, low friction. They get maxed out the wattage, I guess, yeah. The drive base also has these kind of side things, which took from 4082V. It basically helps getting around the poles um, when you're actually aligning to shoot, and they help just slipping around other robots, yeah. Next thing would be our intake. Uh, we've had this intake for a very long time, actually, this design. It's a major, major thing is just we replace the C channel because this is kind of like a bumper. So also the placement of these flex wheels, they actually allow us to kind of stick to teams when we're playing defense. Which we do uh, teams with like these plexi guards on the side. Those flex wheels give you grip, so they can have a hard time getting past us. We just have a piece of C channel to help with this plexi over here, which is just zip tied down to help the uh, discs get in. The disc guards, three small ones on either side. And this is double chained. We notice that scrimmages, the chain would just slip off or just snap completely. So in this one, we just added these double chained. Also, this is the uh, higher strength sprockets. Yeah, they're bigger mm -hmm. sprockets, which they weigh more, but they gave a bit less lob, I think it is. We used to have the smaller chains. The wheels would skip way more often than when we switched to these, just worked way better. The end would snap a lot. So yeah, our, our intake is on what, a 600 RPM. It's basically directly powered. The motor powers one of the center axles. And we got, yeah, one, two, three, four, five stages. Yeah, our fifth stage, all the way here at the top, we are actually using the 1.5 inch wheels here, which helps slow the discs down a little bit, giving it a bit less violent stacking. There is a little bit of a buggy and it happened at Dome 2 a lot where if we intake, intake like three discs like simultaneously, one of them would just get jammed completely. So you would have to shoot one and then it would be fine. I guess now we can talk a bit more about the stacking. We have a pretty unique, I don't know, stopper system. This is just a moving piece. Very slightly you can move. And so this kind of just helps absorb the shock and orient it a little bit better. We also have these kind of arches, which help stop the disc. You just adjust it before every match. These wheels, these 1.5 inch wheels, it allows you to have the discs much closer to the actual intake. So that was pretty nice for compactness. Nylon and this thing, this is a nylon string. Okay. Basically, it just protects the flywheel when the disc comes. And it also slows it down. Yeah, it slows it down. Yeah. I think part of the stacking is kind of having that room for air just to kind of bounce the disc back a little bit. Next thing would be, I guess we could talk about the roller mat. With the roller mat is pretty simple too. I think it's 66. 66. Right? Basically just double chained both sides. Same reason as the intake. At a scrimmage, uh, they snapped and you can do rollers. So we decided to just, I literally just cloned. On either side. Next thing I guess would be the flywheel. So this is just a smaller, the smaller flywheel, a three inch flex wheels. We just switched over from the larger one because spin up is a lot faster. And one issue that we ran into is that because it was smaller, we had less inertia, but we compensated uh, over pretty well in driver. Our programmers just figured it out eventually. Next thing we can talk about is I guess the uh, laser cut insert we have for the flywheel. Yeah, this helped a lot with the performance. We used the 606X method while for a while, but we noticed this, it would actually kind of kill the um, these uh, I guess gears on the motor. Also, the motor performance seemed to be yeah. The motor performance was bored. It wasn't bad, but it was it wasn't as good. Worse yeah, over time. It's yeah. probably just our implementation, but you know, yeah. this maybe, just worked better. Maybe for we us. didn't build it correctly, but yeah. the moment we put a laser cut in here, I mean, it was mm -hmm. just so much better. Next thing I guess we can talk about is the indexer. 
So the indexer is spinning at 1000 RPM. Um, it's ratcheted to the intake. When we're intaking, it doesn't spin this way. And then when you spin the outtake, it flips forward. Pretty interesting design. Um, we went through multiple iterations of a ratchet. Our ratchet initially, we had, um, I think, a screw on the 12-2 mm -hmm. gear, um, which yeah. worked pretty well, but we had some issues with the slippage. We kind of finalized this design with the uh, zip tie head. Yeah, so it slips very easily a one way. It literally would not, never slip on this one. Uh, yeah. No, and shout out to I think two five four F. I think it, it was the two five. Yeah, we took two five four F at Scrim. Uh, they actually showed it to us, and it was a pretty neat design. So we tried it out ourselves. One of the fastest indexings. Yeah, we saw so this worked really well. You have this double stacked flex seals, yeah, on one side but not the other side. With only one and one, I had a bit of issues when the last disc without a compression bar would kind of not go as easily. With the addition of just one double stack, and I only did one double stack because I didn't really want to fiddle around with the spacing over here. Yeah, so also wait, um, you know, yeah, wait, 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 yes, wait that is a reason. There you yeah. go, wait. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this spins really smoothly, pretty much pretty yeah. simple. We also use foam for shooting, it helps. I shoot the discs a lot straighter. Got this from 4082. I think we saw that in the reveal. Before we just used, um, I think, mesh. That worked pretty well, but yeah, this just got worn out very easily, so that was the only issue. And then this is our blooper. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty simple design, really. Um, uh, I, I don't see that many teams built like this, but yeah, it's pretty simple. This one's pretty hidden away, so you're fine. Funnily enough, uh, the blooper itself is at a slightly higher angle than the shooter mm -hmm. angle. It just helps with the distance of the goal when you're shooting from outside the barrier. Mm -hmm. The angle is fixed by this nut. One of the ways you can do it, pretty fine-tuned blooper angle. I think pretty well. the one mistake we actually made on the first, for our blooper for states uh, on that snail ball is that the angle was very, very steep. Mm -hmm. So this actually made it issues, created issues for our driver, Alex as the only way to really make it work is you have to be very precise. The shooting box mm -hmm. was really, really small. So we just made this one a little uh, less steep. So we had a little bit more room for air. It didn't have to yeah. be perfectly aligned every single time. I think the next thing we talk about is we talk about like the pneumatics and all that. In regards to our pneumatics, I guess I can show you where we mounted the tanks, just one tank because we don't really use that much air. It's really just this and our blooper. And two tanks is a lot, a lot of weight. So one mm -hmm. tank was more than enough for us. And we also moved a lot of the stuff on our robot to the bottom of it. We wanted our center mass to be pretty low and even our battery over here is placed right in the middle. Um, and this is also so we don't just get other teams like pulling off the battery cable or anything. Yeah. So over here, there are zip ties across the battery. And this is one battery clip and then another zip tie that holds it on the other side, front end. But basically the idea is that these will hold it in and then these zip ties, they actually go across. And even if somehow the battery clip and the zip tie completely fail, there is literally no way this battery could fall out because these zip ties would just hold it up. We've never ever had batteries getting unplugged or falling out or any of that mess. Cause that'd be a really sad way to lose. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah.